What's up guys, it's Riantium here, and today we are back once again in Stellaris Console Edition taking a look at Synthetic Dawn. More importantly, the Roboboy Extinguishers are back. Now in the last video that I did regarding the Roboboy Extinguishers and everything with Synthetic Dawn, you can check up in the top right hand corner if you didn't get a chance to see it, but we went over all of the traits that the Machine Empires had to offer. And you can see down there uh, where it says traits, we have you know the machine, logic engines, mass produced, repurposed hardware, and bulky. But the one thing you don't see are the civics. Now the civics are what we're going to go over today in this Machine Empire overview kind of breakdown video. So without further ado, let's actually check this out, shall we? So in order for you to create a Machine Empire, there's a couple things you have to have, especially in the Empire section. You have to be what's known as a Gestalt Consciousness. Now the Gestalt Consciousness, if you've owned Utopia, you know that the Hive Mind is also a Gestalt Consciousness, but the AI Network is what we'll be taking a look at today, and these over here is what we'll be taking a look at today as well. Constructobot. Constructobot reduces the build cost and upkeep for all buildings and districts by 10%. Now this is a great one, not necessarily as a beginning civic. The reason I say that is because you're going to build your economy around buildings that are already costing a fortune. Uh, what's great later on down the road is when you put this in, when you reform your government, when you reform your government, if you want things to cost less and you want to pay less for them, or pay less for them, this is a great one to add later on down the road. Granted, when you go to reform your government, it does take 250 influence, so it's certainly not the best one to put in, but it's definitely something to look at. And the reason I say it's something to look at um, is because there is tech that reduces the building cost, there are traditions that reduce the building and upkeep cost, and you know, there's a whole lot of other things that go with that. So Constructobot, not necessarily the main thing that you're going to want to look for if you're looking for an early game Civic. This is definitely a mid to late game to kind of take a little bit of the burden off of upgrading buildings, uh, the upkeep of buildings, and building new ones on new colonies later on down the road. Then we have Delegated Functions, which in my opinion is one of the worst civics you could ever possibly take, either middle game, late game, or even the early game when you first start out. If you start your empire with this one, it's kind of strange why you would want to do that. But I can see in some ways paying less for leaders and being able to have more of them is great, especially if you're going to have a whole bunch of leaders. But then by that point that you have a whole bunch of leaders, chances are you've already got the economy to support those leaders. But what this does is, like it says, it uh, reduces the upkeep by 25%, and considering now that leaders, instead of in 1.7 uh, taking influence to, uh, to, to hire, the energy cost of the leaders will scale with the amount of admin uh, capacity you have. Now what I mean by that is if you decide to go over your admin capacity by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 points, you're really going to start to feel the leader cost be jacked up a little bit. On screen right now you can see how much my leaders actually cost more than they would if I didn't have so much admin sprawl right now on my current Machine Empire playthrough. It's a little bit insane. So minus 25%, that's a great thing if you're like me and can't manage your damn admin cap the way you should be able to. But the leader pool size doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's I've I've never run into any problems where I didn't have enough leaders, um, but maybe maybe people do. I don't know. Uh, it's definitely not one that I would pick though. And then we've got Big Papa. We've got Big Boy Robo Boy Extinguisher Determined Exterminator. Now this one, we're going to do a video on this one, Driven Assimilators, and Rogue Servitors all by themselves. That way they get all the attention that they need when it comes to talking about them. Because all three of those, the Determined Exterminator, Driven Assimilator, and Rogue Servitor, they all change the game dramatically. And I'm going to say dramatically because that's dramatically and drastically all at the same time. Uh, the way you change the game by playing as those guys, it's very, very fun. So we're not going to go over it today. But keep in mind, we will be doing an in-depth video on Determined Exterminators, Driven Assimilators, and the Rogue Servitors. That way you guys can get uh, an in-depth breakdown. But I will touch on the surface of them. So the Determined Exterminators, think Terminators. If you've ever wanted to become Skynet, that's totally fine. Uh, they are hell-bent on destroying any organic life that they find in the galaxy. You can definitely tell that there's a bunch that comes with it. You start with a tomb world, you cannot use diplomacy, uh, and uh, you know you get all of these different bonuses that we'll go over in depth. 
Same thing with the Driven Assimilators, but instead of having a bloodthirst for killing everybody, you have a bloodthirst for turning everyone into cyborgs. Now the cyborgs, uh, it's very similar to the Utopia uh, Ascension perk, which is the, um, uh, what is it, the Flesh is Weak and the Synthetic Evolution. This is basically the equivalent of already starting with the Flesh is Weak for another uh, species in your empire. So we can take a look here, you can actually see which um, cyborg species you want to start with, and you can customize them in any way that you want, which is really, really cool. But like I said, we'll go over that later on down the road in another video. Then we have factory overclocking, and this is another one that really I don't ever use and doesn't really have a whole lot of basis within the whole grand scheme of things. I will, however, say you can combine this with one of the traits, and I bet you if you guys have seen the trait video, you'll know exactly which one I'm talking about. So factory overclocking, you get leader cap level plus one and an extra 10% when it comes to your leader's experience gain. Now when it comes to getting your leader's experience, you can do anomalies, your researchers will just continue to research text, the higher level research you do, the better off you'll be getting more XP, the longer they're in that position, the more XP they'll get. But if you feel you need a boost, this is something to look at, but it's definitely not worth putting, there, putting it there in um, mid game to late game. If you want a little bit of an edge to your leaders, use factory overclocking with this trait. So use that with uh, enhanced memory, as well as the learning algorithms, because then you would have, from the beginning of the game, you would have a plus three leader level cap, and then you would have a plus, what is it, 25 plus 10, 35% experience gain when it comes to your leaders, which could be a nice, a nice boost to your leaders, especially in the early game, but it's completely up to you, but it's not great by itself. Then we have introspective. Introspective being one of the best things if you want to rush engineering tech, if you want to get all the way down to mega engineering, if you have um, the Utopia DLC installed, uh, it's a great one to have if you want to do more things with robots, more things with machines, more things with minerals and alloys and everything like that. It's a great one to have because then it gets you at 20% faster. And if you combine that with logic, uh, logic engines, uh, you'll start the game with 30% extra engineering research, which <laughs> that's no small, that's not a small percentage. Then OTA updates is edict cost minus 20%. Now this one's okay, because I find myself using edicts a lot. And what are edicts, you might be asking? Well, edicts came in 2.2 with the ability to uh, turn them on for 10 years, I think, at the beginning, or 15 years at the beginning. I can't remember which one it is. But you turn it on and they give you a boost. Sometimes they cost influence, sometimes they cost energy, sometimes they cost strategic resources. Having them 20% less is a nice little bonus, especially at the beginning, because if you were to put on Map the Stars, which is the first, or one of the first ethic, or one of the first edicts you have access to when you first start the game, Instead of costing 100 influence, it would cost 80, which is nice. That's a nice little boost, uh, because then you have more influence to, to expand through um, the Star Beast system. But as far as something that I would take later on down the road, I would probably start with OTA updates if I wanted something to lessen the cost so that I could constantly be using edicts. But at the same time, it's not the most useful. What is the most useful? is Rapid Replicator. Rapid Replicator gives you a plus 20% assembly speed right off the bat. 20% assembly speed is incredible, and just as we went over in the trait video, if you combine that with Mass Produced, you get an additional 15% assembly speed on top of that. 20% plus 15%, that's an additional 35% assembly speed at the beginning of the game. That's incredibly powerful. Because like I said in the trait video, you're going to be expanding to every planet you find because machine empires do not have a habitability uh, negative. They are habitable on every planet. Doesn't matter if it's a tomb world or a tropical world. You can live there. So if you're growing 35% faster on five worlds, whereas an organic empire is only growing on two, you're going to blow past them in population size. And more pops means better economy, which means more resources, which means more pizza, which means happiness. Then we have Rock Breakers. Rock Breakers is a very interesting one that's great from the beginning, but can also be very powerful on the middle and end. 
this adds one mineral from the miner's jobs. Now that's that might be a little bit weird to wrap your head around because most things that add things to jobs, um, it just adds a percentage, like 15% more minerals to jobs or energy and everything like that. But this, this is minerals from the miners, which means instead of mining three or four minerals from this, it's now going to mine five or you know anything like that. It increases it by one. Now I know what you might be thinking, how could that help me? It's just one. Well, if you've played in 1.7, which all of us have, <laughs> when, because we're on console edition, when you had plus one minerals, it was it was sometimes a difference between night and day. Um, but with this, if you add this in the beginning, it's nice to have a, a little boost, especially when you combine it with uh, another trait, such as the one at the top, which is industrious, I believe, or that's those are organic. Power drills is the one. So if you combine that with power drills, that's a pretty good one. But what's nice is if you add it in the middle to late game, if you reform your government like that, all of your pre-existing mining districts with jobs, they'll all, they're all gonna get that plus one boost. Every job is gonna get that plus one boost. And it's gonna, it's gonna bump you up quite a bit. You know, a couple hundred minerals here and there will be very, very nice. Then Rogue Servitory, as we talked about before, Determined Exterminators are determined to just exterminate all life in, uh, all in the galaxy. Driven Assimilators want you to join their kind of robotic hive mind. Whereas Rogue Servitors are a very interesting way to play. And like I said, we're going to do a video on its own uh, with um, uh, coming in the near future. But Rogue Servitors, think of it as this. You are a machine empire, super intelligent machine empire, but your only goal in life is to pamper your lovely organic biotropies. Now what I mean by biotrophies is you can now uh, customize your own biotrophy, which is another species for you to serve. Now you gotta remember, when it comes to, where did it go? When it comes to uh, unity with robots, they don't really make a whole lot. But with a rogue servitory, yeah, you're gonna be making so much unity, you're not gonna know what, what hits you. But like I said, we'll go over that again soon. Then we have Static Research Analysis, adding plus one research alternatives. Now the research alternatives I wouldn't necessarily go with, in fact this is probably one of the worst civics to go with, it's only if you want more choices right from the beginning. Because there are texts that give you more research alternatives, it's not hard to find them. Uh, in fact they come up quite often, so it's definitely something you don't necessarily need in the middle to late game, but if you want another option in the beginning of the game, this might be one to go for. Then we have Unitary Cohesion. More unity from a machine empire is wonderful because you struggle a little bit with the with the unity production as you can't build you know, the regular unity producers, the Autochthon monuments, the spiritualist temples, anything like that, but you can build a building that creates unity. But if you combine Unitary Cohesion with Rogue Servitory, my god! You're gonna be swimming in unity. <laughs> you're gonna be, you're gonna use so much unity, and then you'll be unlocking the ambitions much, much quicker. There's a whole lot of things that go with that, and all of those things that I just mentioned will be uh, topics gone over in future videos as well. But then we get to one of my favorites. Warbots. Warbots is army damage plus 20%, army upkeep minus 20%. I don't know what I love about armies so much, but when it comes to machine empires, you have access to two of the most unique, um, the most unique units in the game. It's the war form and the battle forms. And the battle forms, I think, is a precursor to the war forms. And the war forms, think, um, if you can, I'll, I'll give, you, give you a couple examples. Warhammer 40k. Uh, with the giant mechs and robots and shit, uh, and then think, you know, maybe like Pacific Rim, gigantic robots fighting and stuff. Those are the those are the war forms. But if you add war bots on top of that, you get a plus 20% army damage to something that already can level planets, and it's a really fun bonus to have. And last but not least, we have Zero Waste Protocols. Now, Zero Waste Protocols is a great one to combine with another one of your traits, because it adds negative 10% robot upkeep, which means you pay less for keeping your robots going. And if you combine that, if you combine that with Durable, you get 20% robot upkeep gone from the beginning of the game. And 20% robot upkeep gone from the beginning of the game can be the difference between paying 1 energy and 0.8 energy compared to, you know, all of your other robots, which is really, really nice. 
because paying less for your robots by doing the same thing is a nice little feature. So a lot of these are, you know, things that can be combined with traits to really kind of overclock your thing. And I, I said that because I was looking at that one. But when it comes to playing as machine intelligence, a machine empire, you can choose one of the three incredible ones that change the way you play. Or if you want to just use one of the two or two of the ones that, um, two of the regular civics, you can absolutely do that because machine intelligence is by themselves whether it's Determined Exterminators, Driven Accelerators, or Rogue Servitors, are still very powerful. Not to mention, you would free up one space uh, in the Civics to start with. If you wanted to start with uh, Rock Breakers and Rapid Replicators, you could get um, the Power Drills and have 15% more minerals from jobs, plus you get one more mineral from all of that stuff. Then if you wanted Mass Produced with Pop Assembly Speed, you could have a 35% increase to that while also making more minerals. So it's very fun to kind of mix and match these things together to make them work the best for you. So that is Civics covered by Machine Empires. We have done the traits and now we've done the Civics. As far as ethics go, there's no ethics besides the Gestalt Consciousness, which means we don't need to go into authoritarianism, pacifism, egalitarianism, etc, etc. Those, however, will be reserved for when we go over the Organic Empires coming later on down the road. So once we've covered everything from Synthetic Dawn, I might try and sprinkle a few things in here, here and there with 2.2 and Organic Empires, but for now, we're going to stick with a bunch of the Machine Empire stuff. So if you're looking forward to that, let me know down there in the comment section. Look forward to the Driven uh, Assimilator, Determined Exterminator, and Rogue Servitor videos on their own. Um, and if you're looking for any more Stellaris content, down there in the description, there are a bunch of great channels down there that do content surrounding Xbox, PlayStation, as well as PC. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.